Hi everyone, it's Rayvon from Love Lola. Welcome to my channel. So tonight's tutorial, it's kind of late. It's after 10 o'clock here in Texas. Um, it's going to be really kind of raw. I'm not going to do much editing. It's just that earlier today I posted my clutch that I did. And I have had quite a few people purchase the pattern um, after I posted this. And I mentioned it, but I, I know sometimes people don't notice but I mentioned that this was a modified version of the Ray clutch and so I made it a little bit different from the one that I made that's actually this is the original and the way this one is made is the flap is separate and it's attached to the clutch there's also a zipper on it and inside we have some card slots So this is the original Ray clutch that you will purchase if you get it from my, um, when you purchase the pattern. But the one I did today is modified and I just didn't want anyone to purchase that pattern and then get it and are not happy because it doesn't look like what I posted today. So this is going to be a quick little video to show you how I modified that clutch um, to get it to look like this. I'm not going to be sewing or anything. I'm just going to kind of talk you through it, but it's really, it's really easy. Whenever I make these clutches, I really just make, I don't have a, a set size or measurement. I'm constantly changing it up and I'm going to show you how you can do that to get it to be how you want it to be. Um, especially like when I do these, when I decide to do my scrap buster and I, I add my scrap, I do different size scraps. Sometimes I'll cut them for by two inches. Sometimes I'll cut them by two and a half inches. It just depends what, what mood I'm in or what look I'm going for. So that's why sometimes also the sizes look a little different because I'm adjusting it to what I'm doing, if that makes sense. For reference, this is the one that comes with the pattern and this is the one that I posted today. The measurements for the one I posted today to get this size is going to be um, 12 and a half inches long and 11 and a half inches wide. Here is another one that I'm working on. For this one, the measurements are 18 inches long and 11 and a half inches wide. And the way that I make these, that I make these in one piece. So as you can see, this is one piece of fabric, um, two pieces sewn together, but the fabric itself is cut into one piece. And then you simply fold it into the clutch. So the way that I get these is I grab a piece of material round about the size that I want my clutch to be. Okay, so I gave you the measurements for this, and here is another one that I made. And the measurements to make one this size is 24 inches long and 14 and a half inches wide. So, first thing you're gonna do is grab your material that you're going to be using. This one is 24 inches by 14 and a half. And then what I do is I just find the center of this. Once I have the center, I take the flap and I place it right there in the center. Make sure you get it nice and even. Then I grab a ruler and I lay it flat right along that line. Cut it. Repeat the same thing to the other side and cut it. When I make these, I do use vinyl for both my exterior and also my lining just because I want it to have a little bit of a firmness. I feel like a clutch, you know, you don't want it to be floppy when you pick it up like doop doo doo. Nope, you want it to be a little bit sturdy. So I do use um, lining, I mean, I do use vinyl for both of them. I also do interface. Sometimes, it depends on the vinyl that I'm using. If it's a, a thicker, stiffer vinyl, I'll skip the interfacing. But 
usually I do. Yeah, just make sure that when you interface, you keep the interfacing out of the seams because in the end, we're going to be having a lot of stuff getting sewn together. So you don't want interfacing in your seam. Also, what I've been doing for these clutches is if you're like me, you have vinyl that you purchased maybe a long time ago that now you feel like the vinyl isn't up to quality. Um, it isn't up to par or maybe you just don't like the way that it sews, you know, maybe it's catching, whatever the reason. I have vinyl sitting around in my closet that I've had forever and I know I'm never going to make a bag with it. So I've been using these as stabilizers because I am trying to be as cost effect. I'm trying to keep my cost down as much as possible. So stabilizer is just something that's giving st stability to the bag. It can be pillon or it can be some vinyl or, you know, whatever it is. You know, <laughs> when you open those old bags, they have cardboard in them and God knows what. Basically, just whatever is going to stabilize his back. So what I've been doing is using a little bit of interfacing on my exterior and then also grabbing some old vinyl that I have hanging around and cutting it in the same shape and using a spray adhesive and applying it to my lining to get a little bit more stability. So that's an option if you're trying to save a little bit of money, which we always are, right? Okay, um, so once you've got that cut out, now you're left with this. And I do like to add the same card slots that is in the pattern, the ray clutch. I use that to add card, card slots on here. And then I also went ahead and added a little pocket because this clutch is so big. I wanted to add a pocket for a cell phone. So that's what that is. I think for this, I measured it. Let me see if I have it in my notes. That pocket. Okay. Yes, I made the pocket six inches wide by nine inches long. And what I did was... I made it nine inches long, but then I folded it at the six inch mark. So let's say that this is the pocket. I made it nine inches long and then I measured up to six inches and at the six inch mark, I folded it under and then top stitched along there so that as far as they can see down, it would be vinyl on both sides, but I didn't make it go all the way down. So that's how I did that pocket right there. See, so it stops about right there. All right, moving on. So this is what we have at this point. You will have, you will have a exterior piece and also a lining piece cut exactly the same. And now you're just gonna place them right sides together. Just like that. You're going to pin around it and then we're going to sew. I start right here because I'm going to leave about six, I leave about six inches open. And then starting here, back stitching, of course, we're going to go all the way around, back up to the top and stop. Once we have that done, we're going to turn the bag out. And once you turn it out, this is what you're going to have this okay now for this large size bag once I turn it out I measured down four inches from the top, one, two, three, four, and that's where I want my, when I bend it up, that's where I want it to stop. But you can change this however you want your clutch to look. If you want your 
flap to go down farther like that see you can make it go down further if you want just a little bit of a flap showing you can modify this however you like that's just where I did my bend okay so once you have turned it out and you're here you should have actually I lied before you get to this point right when you have cut out these pieces you should go ahead and use this to mark where you are going to be putting your magnetic snap and then get that installed and that will be on your lining you would be installing that magnetic snap on your lining so you can do that as soon as you get your lining cut out okay so at this point you would be here you are would already have your magnetic snap and you would measure down how and figure out wherever you want to have your bag bend once you're happy with where it bends, just use the indention or just use that to see where you need to place the male part of um, the female part of your snap and then go in through this hole because this is still open and get that installed. After you get that installed, then you're just going to fold down this piece over here and top stitch across at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now, once you get that top stitched, You are going to pin your sides together very good. Now you're sewing through a lot. The reason why I didn't do this method in my um, pattern is because not very many people would be able to sew through all of this with their machines. You almost have to have an industrial to do something like this, um, unless you used cotton fabric. But anyway, you're sewing through a lot and so it can shift I've made quite a few and I've only had one time, no, I had two times that it shifted and I didn't catch it. So what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to be applying cement glue. You can use any kind of fabric glue that you have or probably even double sided tape would work. And I'm just going to apply that right on the corners and clamp it just to make sure that there's no shifting going on because I like to sew these at 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. I don't like when there's a big seam allowance on the clutch. I just, I don't know. So that's an option if you want to be super safe is to somehow adhere these together before you start sewing. Okay, once you're ready to sew, remember we have already closed this up. We've installed this snap. If you have a label, you would have already put this label somewhere. Now we're moving on. This is closed. What we're going to do when we get to the machine is have it facing up like this and just start at one end back stitching of course and you're just going to go up and you're going to just sew right over the the where it, this other side ends you're just going to keep going and you're sewing at one eighth of an inch seam allowance bam 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 all the way back down and that's it y'all it's so easy like this clutch is so simple to make I did make it where it is compatible with this um, um, the little edge trim. I don't know what you call it from Emmeline's bag. So if you want to take your bag up a notch, you can always add that. That's what I did on this one. Yeah, just. Be mindful that depending on how thick your vinyl is, you could have trouble with that. So maybe test it out on a piece before you do it. Like, I don't know if this is gonna fit because this vinyl is super, super thick, so I may not be able to add this. I'll see, I'll play around with it. Sometimes if you add a stitch right along that perimeter, it will make it thinner. So we'll see. But yeah, that's it, it's super easy. You know and have fun with it modify these clutches as uh, however you want to you know like you can you can go nuts with it um so yeah let me know if you purchase this pattern if you have any questions whatsoever hit me up i respond to everyone i will get with you so um okay last thing i almost forgot depending on how, on how i want the feel of the clutch to be i usually will before I close this up, I will measure this area and then I'll take about an inch off. 
So for this bag, let's say it is um, 11 inches by about seven inches. I would cut a piece of Pellon 70, um, 10 inches by six inches, and then I would reach in through this hole and I would situate it, situ <laughs> I can't talk, oh my God. And I'm gonna place that stabilizer right in this area using that bin to know that's where I need to place it. So basically it would be here. That's the size the stabilizer would be. And that would just give a little bit more structure to it. Um, I reach in, usually I'll use some kind of um, adhesive spray or something just to get it to stick, you know, where I need it to stick. And then I go about the rest of, like I said. Just depends on how stiff you want it to be. Stabilizer. Is that what I was trying to say? I'm tired. Really quick. This is the strap connector that I used. I never put the screws in, so now I can show you. Um, I didn't include the link earlier, I'm not gonna lie, because I saw that she didn't have very many left, and I didn't want to risk her running out before I ordered some more. But let me stop being like that. I'll put the link down below for you. They're on sale. Okay. So it's, so it's really easy. All you do is slide it onto the side. Again, when you're dealing with a lot of vinyl and a lot of seams like this, sometimes it can get a little bulky and it's hard to get hardware on it. What I find that helps is I will go and add stitches to it. I'm sure you see that. I just went and stitched over it a few times and that helps to flatten those seams out, That all of that vinyl. You see how it gets a little bit flatter right there? So that's what I did, and after I did that, I was able to get it on. And then you just slide it on. That's it. And then once you get it all the way on, you grab the two screws. I don't have them because they're in my, they're put away and I don't feel like getting them out. But just grab your two screws that came with it and stick them in those holes. And then use whatever um, screwdriver that you have to tighten those screws. And that's it. These are really pretty though, right? They just look so classy. Bringberry has got some nice stuff. I don't know if you got, I just found out. I'm always late. I just found out about Bringberry not too long ago. And I love, 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 love. The hardware they have a lot of unique items um i do find like it's like once they're gone they're gone so you just kind of have to constantly you know go and revisit to see what she has available she's always adding new stuff and that's the beauty of it so and that's also what happens when you're adding a lot of new products is once it runs out it runs out you know and you're bringing in new stuff so go check it out if you haven't i know you probably have because i'm always late but yeah she's got some nice stuff yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. If you found this video helpful at all, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. Uh, that's it. I'll see y'all next time. Bye!